Okay, so let's use um, projectile motion to find the initial velocity of the metal ball. So what you see is a ballistic pendulum where the metal ball is fired from the pendulum and the ball travels in the air in a parabolic path and hits the ground. And uh, in the experiment, you will be able to measure the range, which is the horizontal distance X you see here, and also the vertical uh, motion vertical distance traveled by the ball, y. So those are the two measurements you're going to make. So you're going to measure x and y, and you know how to measure those. So x is the horizontal distance from the launch point to the target point. Uh, y is the vertical distance from the launch point to the ground. Now, we are going to use projectile motion to figure out the initial velocity. So you may remember that when you do projectile motion, we look at the motion in two directions. So we, we are going to look at this in x direction. So, so this is the x direction here. And also we look at this in the y direction. So let's write down what we have in the x and y directions. Now the uh, initial velocity in the x direction is going to be u, and that's what we are looking for. So we will call it u. Uh, the x distance it travels is going to be, we are going to call it x. That's a range we are going to measure. And then the acceleration is going to be zero in the x direction. You should know that for projectile motion, there is no acceleration in the x direction. Okay. So now to figure out the u, we need one more quantity, which is going to be the time. And we don't have that here, but we will, we will get that from the uh, y motion and then we can use it over here. Okay, so let's say the time is t, then uh, uh, if you apply one of those kinematic equations, x equals say v naught x t plus one half a x t squared, um, because a is zero, so this is zero, so the whole thing is zero. So basically, you see that x is equal to v naught x, which is u times t. So u is going to be just x divided by t. So, so what we are going to do is we're going to find the time t from the y motion. All right, so let's go to the y motion now and let's write down what we have. Now, the initial velocity in the y direction is how much? Now, in this example, uh, the ball is fired horizontally. That's very important. So if the ball is fired horizontally, initially, there is no vertical velocity. So V naught Y should be zero here. And then the acceleration in the Y direction is going to be plus 9.8 because I'm using my downward direction as positive here. So AY is plus 9.8. And the Y distance, we know we're going to measure that. That's Y. So we do have three things here. So we can figure out time. So we can figure out the time, all right? So which equation we are going to use? The same equation, which is y equals v naught y t plus one half a t squared. So if we use this, y is y. Now v naught y is zero. So we bring that zero there. That's zero plus one half a is 9.8 t squared. So this means y is one half times 9.8 will be 4.9 t squared. So that means t squared is going to be y divided by 4.9. So you can find t simply taking a square root. So t, t is going to be equal to square root of y over 4.9. So that's the t. So you can take the t and put it for this. So you can take this t and put it for this t here. So what you will see is u is equal to x divided by t. So I had to put this in the bottom. It will be over y over 4.9 anyway. So, so you can calculate. So that means measuring x and y, you can calculate the value for u. So that's what you're going to do in the first part of the experiment.